the In Conversation podcast series, with author, Nigel Beckles. Welcome to the podcast. podcast. Please like the podcast, podcast. and subscribe podcast. to this channel. Podcast. Thank you. Have you experienced several failed relationships or been through a divorce? How can you avoid making the same mistakes again? How to avoid making the big relationship mistakes is out now. Hi, my name is Nigel Beckles. My new book is packed with practical and common sense strategies that you can use to make better relationship choices. Now you can discover the dangerous myths about love. If your relationship expectations are realistic, why you could be falling in love for all the wrong reasons. How to avoid making the big relationship mistakes. It's a book that could change your life. Available from Amazon.co.uk. Kindle version also available. Experiencing back problems? Invest in Avoca Posture Corrector today. Available from Amazon and all good chiropractor specialists. Order yours today, 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 today. The very best way to promote your podcasts. Podpage makes it easy to create a podcast website with just a few clicks. Every page is optimized to be found on Google and it stays up to date forever. For more information visit podpage.com. The future of podcast promotion. Get ready for takeoff. Welcome back to my In Conversation podcast series. My guest for this episode is an author, speaker, consultant, and transition expert, American Dr. Tommy Watson. Hi, Tommy. Welcome to my podcast series. How are you? Hey, Nigel, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me, brother. It's very good to have you here. So where do you live at the moment? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. And did you grow up there? Uh, I've been here about eight years. I'm originally from Denver, Colorado. I went to school at the University of Minnesota and was there for about 20 years and moved to Charlotte about eight years ago. So this is my hometown now. Yeah, you mentioned school. What was your childhood like? You know what, Nigel? Unfortunately, in growing up in Denver, Colorado, my mother and father were drug addicts and shoplifters. So I spent a lot of time in foster homes and crisis centers, and motel rooms. They were uh, arrested 121 times by the time I finished high school. So as you can imagine, as a kid, I spent a lot of time bouncing around from uh, homeless shelters, crisis centers, motel rooms living with different relatives, in and out of different foster homes. So my childhood was all over the place, unfortunately. You know, it was just kind of uh, really scattered. And and, uh, for the last six months of my senior of high school, I spent sleeping on the friend of family's floor, you know, as I was homeless because my mother was in prison. So um, unfortunately, when you have parents who are engaged in uh, drug-led activities, the consequence back then for heroin addicts in the United States of America was to simply lock them up. Now they've changed their position on it where, Heroin addicts are now seen as um, there's a, it's a disease. So now they're giving them they're giving them the right thing by giving them uh, more medical and uh, more emotional uh, help versus locking them up. But for my parents, they were definitely on the other end where they were being locked up all the time. So would you say then that your parents' addiction was a direct result of you becoming homeless? Uh, absolutely. I mean, when, whenever the, the, the caregivers who bring you into this world aren't in a position to, to look after you and care for you, you definitely suffer the consequences. And I mean, literally, I met my oldest brother by pure coincidence in a foster home because he had been taken away by another family. And we just happened to be in the same foster home. He was visiting uh, one day, you know. So um, unfortunately, when you're a kid, the things that happen to you in life are direct impact of uh, what your parents are doing or are not doing. So definitely the impact. Yes. So how did you recover from being homeless? You know what? You know what? I got involved in sports in third grade. I was actually getting ready to join a gang in third grade. I was living with my aunt at the time, and she got me involved in basketball. And basketball became a saving grace for me. So, you know, it gave me something to aspire to look for. So my goal to go to the NBA and then later the NFL kept me out of a lot of trouble. It kept me over, gave me the chance to get over a lot of hurdles. But also with that came education because there's never been a person go to the NFL who hasn't gone to college. So once I figured that out, I knew I had to go to college. So school meant something to me because I'd never up to that point. um, School didn't mean much to me because I didn't know any black people in my neighborhood ever went to college. So once I started dreaming about going to the NFL, I had to make the connection between NFL and college 
And education became my seven grace and helped me get out of poverty and out of homelessness um, once I went off to uni. Well, let me say this, though. Once I went off to the University of Minnesota, one thing, this is what I'll tell people, though. I, you know, it's different growing up in poverty versus homeless. When you're, when you're, so my friends who were in poverty here in the U.S., Nigel, they lived in the projects with a single parent mom. They got government assistance and stuff like that. Well, me and my family, we lived in a motel room, no government assistance. We weren't eating most days. All of our food kept, came from school. We had to walk to school. The school didn't have my address. They didn't have my telephone number. We lived in a cheap motel room. It was nine of us in one room. That's a totally different circumstance than growing up in the projects with a single parent mom. And even when I went off to college, Nigel, I still didn't have an address to even give the University of Minnesota when I went off the University of Minnesota. So I would take most of my friends would fly back home for breaks and vacations on a plane. I would take the Greyhound bus back home, which took about 22 hours back to Denver, Minnesota, because it gave me at least one night to sleep somewhere, two nights to sleep somewhere there and back. And I got home to Denver. I wouldn't didn't know where I was going to stay at many times. I'd bounce around from place to place to place. So even the homelessness, it didn't stop once I got this full scholarship to go play football for the University of Minnesota. So I, I mean, we, we were being on television, showcased on television, and then I was going back home to a place where I didn't have a home to, you know? So it, it didn't necessarily stop. And that's the same thing for a lot of kids who are enduring uh, homelessness today, though. Well, you do have a variety of qualifications. What are they? Yeah, so, you know, I have a bachelor's degree. I have a, a master's degree. I have an advanced graduate degree, and I have a doctor of education, leadership, and organizational change. I'm also a certified coach. I'm also a former school principal as well. So I did those things and led a school to make some amazing changes, and um, then later left and became a consultant in what I do today, consulting, coaching, and uh, motivational speaking. And, and I'm an author of uh, two books as well. Yeah, well, you mentioned consulting. Which organizations do you work with, and what do you do with them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had the chance to work with the NFL. I've had the chance to work with McDonald's Corporation, had a chance to work with a number of colleges. And every organization, you know, Nigel, wants to do two things. They want to know how to adjust to change and overcome the obstacle. That's my story. Adjusting to change and overcoming obstacles is what I had to do all my life. So who better to bring in the Dr. Tommy Watson to help organizations adjust to change and overcome obstacles? That's what I've been doing virtually for the last year. Many, many organizations want to figure out how do, how do we become resilient in the midst of COVID-19? How do we become resilient after COVID-19? How do we bounce back from such a year that we've we've dealt with? And I've kind of been the go-to person that people come to to say, hey, Dr. Tommy Watson can tell us how to be resilient and bounce back from these obstacles we faced over the last year. Mm -hmm. So I've been blessed to be able to do that. And it's been uh, been very exciting, a lot of fun. So you've appeared on various TV channels in the U.S. How did you become involved with appearing on TV? The media is always looking for great human interest stories, you know, and I tell people everyone has a human interest story. It's a matter of whether you're going to share it or not. So in the U.S., you know, those stories where individuals come from the inner cities and because by no means I should not have made it out. I mean, when your parents are arrested 121 times and you live in 30 different places, um, most of those guys, unfortunately, are not making out of those circumstances. They're not going on to get doctor's degrees. They're not going to become principals. They're not going on to write books. So my story was very unique and it was very inspiring to many. So that opened up a door for me to be on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, you know, a lot of uh, other stations and and just a plethora of print media and and radio stations as well. So people are always looking for the the story of the overcomer. So I've been blessed to be able to share my story in a way that inspires others to get beyond any challenges you may be facing. Because again, no matter what your color is, no matter where you're from, what your uh, socioeconomic level is, you're going to face some type of challenge in life. And when you can revert back to an overcomer who can give you some principles in terms of how to get through that, it becomes something that can be very meaningful and very valuable to you, no matter where you are in life. So yeah, so I've been able to do that. And it's been exciting to be able to share that message with millions here in the US and across the world as well. Well, you mentioned your books earlier. What are they called and what are they about? So my book, A Face of Courage, is my my story of growing up in Denver in the hardship uh, that I grew up in, you know, bounced around from place to place to place. And it's an award-winning book and um, received a number of awards. And then my other book is called Resilience of Champions because most, most of the time people say, okay, well, Dr. Watson, what did you learn from growing up in that situation there? So I said, I, I got to at least put these resilient habits that I learned from growing up from my situation with a face of courage to let people know how they can get beyond and become resilient. So, you know, I've, I've identified six principles that uh, individuals can partake in to become uh, more resilient. Um, and, and part of it came from part of the story in the book, Resilience of Champions, comes from me working at McDonald's Corporation as well. So I, I learned how to become a great leader 
from working at McDonald's. Most people that wouldn't think that, you know, I got fired from a job, Nigel, and I went to work at McDonald's and uh, people were saying, what are you working at McDonald's for with a college degree? And for a while, it, it kind of, I was like, it kind of bothered me. But once I got a chance to learn through their global management training program about how to be a leader, how to develop people, how to mentor people, how to guide people, how to run a business, a multi-million dollar business, it set me up for a lot of success. So when I went into the school system, I was never a teacher. I was never assistant principal. I never worked at the central office. I elevated to principal very quickly based upon my skills that I acquired from McDonald's. So uh, I tell people, go read, go read the book, Resiliency Champions, so you can find out about some of those skills that I acquired to help make me resilient and help make me a school principal as well. Yeah. So Tommy, what are your plans for the future? What is on your bucket list? Yeah, great, great question, Nigel. So I am currently pitching my, my uh, story as a TV series here to executives in Hollywood and Atlanta to uh, hopefully we'll see it on the, the, the television set someday. And they, you guys will be able to see it over in London as well. So it's going to be, it's called, right now it's being titled Resilience uh, Below Poverty. And it's, it's my story growing up in Denver in the Five Points area, which was an area that was looking to be regentrified, unfortunately. And my plight as a principal to help the community and those students who are facing homelessness in there to retain and keep that part of the community there. So it's very, very fascinating, man. It's, you know, it's going to be a very motivating, inspirational TV series, very similar to All American, uh, combination of Lean on Me, That Is Us, you know, kind of combination of a lot of different things there. So it's going to be very exciting, and I'm very, very looking forward to getting put out there at some point in time here. Yes. So how can people contact you? Absolutely, man. If folks want to contact me, best way to do is go to my website at www.tawatson.com. All my contact information is there. Again, go to www.tawatson.com. I respond to all emails. Uh, email is probably the best way to catch me because I'm traveling a lot of time. So email me. We can talk. And uh, if you're looking for any information on me, my books are there. Uh, movie information is there as well. You know, I did a short film on my movie, Nigel, back in 2019. It's won seven awards as well. So, so we, we got some progress going. You can find out more information on the movie there on the website as well. Tommy in North Carolina, USA. Thank you very much for your time. Hey, appreciate you having me. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. Another In Conversation podcast coming soon.